Travis at Barna Parts. Uh, just going to talk a little bit more about our drive shaft saver. Uh, we've been chipping a bunch of these out here this fall and uh, starting to get some feedback from some guys. Uh, I've been reading some comments on TY and you know getting some feedback firsthand from some customers I've been talking to. And uh, one area we need to address on this with as far as the installation goes is that the uh, <clears throat> the rotor needs to be free on the splines you know when that rotor is on there you know this is this isn't even locked down um you know you, you got to be able to wiggle this rotor and the reason for that is this drive shaft if it's not 100 percent true uh which i found it isn't on one of our test setups this summer you now if this rotor gets tight and the shaft isn't 100 percent true uh, you know, you're going to get some pulsing in that rotor when you're braking and you're actually, you may actually even see the tunnel, uh, kind of wiggle back and forth as that, as that rotor rotates around because there's just nowhere for the, for the run out to go and it starts flexing the caliper and tunnel as an assembly. Um, <clears throat> so we want to be mindful of that after you get it installed, you know, grab a hold of that rotor and make sure it still wiggles. Um, you know, newer sleds, it's going to be a tighter fit and uh what we've been finding is uh you know if, if it's a tighter spline tolerance on a newer machine the expansion that's occurring in here is traveling out just enough to slightly expand these splines as well and you know in turn the rotor is getting tight um <clears throat> so when we were originally doing prototypes you know the the, the original intention was for this to be flush with the end and uh you know in conversations with the machinist you know we talked about adding some flats so the flats were added but you know amidst all you know the the variations in this whole process we kind of missed the fact that we didn't add any additional material to keep this wedge in farther uh in order to keep any expansion from occurring out on the spline so um you know regardless you know the as, as they're made here it, it's still an easy solution it's still perfectly functional and usable um you, you really only need these flats when uh you know you're, you're trying to first set this wedge for the first time so you, know, you can you can install it as shown you can put uh <clears throat> put the wrench on there and then add a little bit of torque to this so it starts to expand it and then, then you can just take a hammer and just knock this in farther so it's in farther in the shaft and that you know the farther in the shaft it is the you know the further away from the splines so the expansion doesn't affect the splines um i've got several customers that have them installed as shown and they they don't have any wiggle i mean they do have they have some slop on the rotor there's no issue uh, i did a mock-up here on one uh as shown with this rotor here and and the rotor got tight you know so again it's it's all over the board is with these tolerances you know and, and it's also going to matter as far as how much torque you apply to the wedge you know the more torque you apply the more expansion you're going to get so it may or may not reach the spline so you know the bottom line is if you install it as shown um you know grab a hold of that rotor make sure it's still free and if it's not, all you need to do is just loosen it up and then and then knock this in. If you knock it all the way into the washer, you're, you're guaranteed. It's I mean, I shouldn't say guaranteed, but I'm like 99% sure you're going to be fine. Um, and uh, one other thing to note, too, the farther in that this goes in the, inside the shaft, I've been finding you actually need less torque. You know, when I have it installed out here, I'm at 35, 40 foot-pounds and when i slide it all the way in you know that this washer is against the end of the shaft i'm starting to get a bearing you know tightened up around 20 25 foot pounds so it also varies exactly where you have it in the shaft you know it affects your your torque so again on, on the future runs here we're probably going to add some more material just so we can make sure you know that the the uh the flats are out but uh, the demand has been so high. I just kind of keep my machinist on these so they've got a lot of blanks made up um, so 
eventually we're going to transition and, and, and make them a little bit longer so the flats can always remain outside. But like I say, it's not a big deal at all. Um, so yeah, if you take anything away from this video, just make sure you check your rotor after you install it. Make sure you have a little bit of slop yet that the rotor can kind of wiggle around there. Um, if you run into any other issues or got any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thanks for watching.